Hello everyone. We are a group of lab mates from the Fakwai group in the chemistry department of the University of Pennsylvania. And today we're going to perform a couple of simple demos, including some that are simple enough for you to do at home, to explain some of the interesting things about one of our favorite types of materials, glass. Hopefully, in the next couple of minutes or so, we'll get you to think about the science behind glass and its properties in ways that you've never thought of before. My guess is when you think of glass, you think of things like drinking glass, glass is the help of vision, window glass, or stained glass, or maybe even the special form of glass that forms when lightning hits sand. What maybe you don't think of, and what I want to convince you of, is that lots of things that you don't expect are actually glassy materials as well. Things like fudge, or like thin films of electronics, or even pharmaceuticals, could all pretty easily be called glass. Basically anything that quickly goes from a liquid state to a solid state and doesn't get the chance to organize into a crystal is a glass. So with that teaser, I'll hand things over to Sarah, who will start to explain a little bit about the temperature at which this liquid to glass transition happens, or the glass transition temperature, TG, with her happy and sad ball demo. Hey everyone, so I'm going to show you um, how we can apply science, and specifically the science of glasses, into bouncy balls with a little experiment that we call happy sad balls. So I have two bouncy balls here, and they seem identical looking at them. They both seem squishy. They feel like bouncy balls. And so I'm going to use them the way a bouncy ball walks, and I'm going to bounce it. Everything's so far so good. We have a bouncy ball. However, if I take the other one and try to bounce it, it just sort of falls flat. So the question that we have before us now is what really gives these bouncy balls the bounce? Um, why is this one very bouncy, very happy, and this one is much more sad? Um, no bounce to it whatsoever. So these two things are made out of polymers that are slightly different, and they're different in a very important quantity that we call TG, a glass transition temperature. So the glass transition temperature is the temperature at which the system changes from sort of a rubbery state, which is bouncy and happy, nope, wrong one, to a gl more glassy state, which is harder, less bouncy. Not a very good bouncy ball. So the difference in these polymers is that the happy ball has a TG that is just below room temperature. So when I'm at room temperature, I'm above the TG. So I have a rubbery bouncy ball. And the sad ball has a TG that is below, um, that is above room temperature. So at TG, I am, so at room temperature, I am below TG. So it's colder than the TG, it's more of a glass, and it falls flat like this. We can sort of experiment this more, experiment with this more by taking a look at my cup of very hot water that I've put a sad bouncy ball into. So I'm going to scoop that out, preferably without boning myself. So this is the sad bouncy ball that had no bounce to it, but now it's very, very hot. Um, it's, it was essentially boiling water when I put it in there. It's cooled down a little, but it's still pretty hot. So now it's got a bit of a bounce to it compared to uh, which one is it? This guy. At room temperature, higher than room temperature. So by changing the temperature of the system, I can change the um, the properties of the bouncy ball. So in the Fakrai lab, we walk a lot with this TG value, this glass transition temperature, and think about how the glass transition temperature might change for different systems um, and different chemicals. Um, but it's also relevant in just some fun little toys. So thanks for tuning in and checking that out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now that we understand what the glass transition temperature is, I'm gonna turn it over to Shiv, where he'll explain to us one of the other interesting properties of glasses, the refractive index, and some fun tricks you can play with it. Hi, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk and show you 
uh, a concept called the refractive index, which is the optical properties of a material. Okay, before I do go ahead, I'm going to show you a small demo. So as you can see, I have two test tube in here. All right, and I'm going to immerse it into this beaker containing vegetable oil. All right, and if I put two test tube in, you're going to see two test tube at the bottom, but wait a minute. I only see one, all right? All right, if you want double check, I can do that again. So there's two test tube. See the oil leaking from top? You can definitely see it was in there. And I do that again and it disappears. See how science is magic? Now, why did this happen? All right, so it happens and I can explain to you how. If you see on the screen here, I put two test tubes in, but one somehow disappears. You can still see it. I have it holding against this right now and still not here. So what is happening? How did I make this disappear? All right, and I don't have a magic wand or anything. So for you to be able to see something when it's immersed into a liquid, especially a transparent glassware, the light needs to bend a little, all right? And if you see here on the left, light is bending a little when I put this test tube, which is filled with water inside, so light bends and you're able to see this test tube moving and it's a bit distorted too, right? That's because of the bending of the light. However, for the oil one, light goes through straight and it does not bend at all. It does not bend at all because the refractive index of the tube and that of the oil inside the test tube and outside have the same refractive index. Did I make that clear? I'm going to say it again. The refractive index, which is the optical properties of the material, of the oil inside the test tube, outside the test tube, and the glass are the same. If they have the same refractive index, that means light just goes straight through and you don't see it. Like here. You can try this at home with just vegetable oil and a Pyrex glass. You will see that it disappears. You probably notice if you immerse a pen into water, the pen is slightly distorted. That's because of the refractive index. There's a change in refractive index. If you've ever been to a pool before or people trying to spear fish, usually the fish, what you see from the top of the surface, it looks a little bit closer to the surface, but in fact, it actually de is deeper. So people spear fishing usually compensate for that. You probably notice when you go to a swimming pool, that it actually looks shallow, but when you go in, it's actually deeper than that. So that's a concept of refractive index that causes lights to bend if there's a difference in the refractive index of two materials. So I hope that made sense and you kind of enjoyed it. You can try this at home if you ask your mom, if you have Pyrex glass and oil. And once again, you see you can make that disappear one more time. All right, thank you, Shiv. And with that, I'd just like to conclude by going over some of the things that we learned today. First, we learned that glass is anything that has a random, liquid-like structure in the solid-like form, including lots of things you might not think about, like foods and electronics. After that, Sarah showed us her happy and sad ball demo, where we learned that the glass transition temperature is where a material changes from a supercooled liquid state into its glassy state. After that, Shiv showed us that glassy materials often have unique optical properties, meaning that they interact with light in special ways and can even make test tubes appear invisible. So hopefully today we've convinced you to think about glass in a whole new way. And on behalf of the Fockrye Lab at the University of Pennsylvania, I'd like to thank you for watching our demos.